right, good morning everybody. I'm Aaron Heiser of Maker's Leather Supply and today we're going to do a little tutorial on hand cut basket weave. Okay, here's a couple of samples or examples right here. Um, I, this is uh, something that's become real popular in the, the leatherworking world here in the last few years. Um, I uh, had a fella come up to me at a convention I was at the other day and asked me how to, you know, he showed me a picture of, of someone else's belt and was like, how does this happen? So I sat down with him and I tooled up a coaster with him and he, uh, he decided that, you know, it was a lot easier than he thought it would be. It just needed some explaining. And uh, anyway, um, this morning I was on Facebook and the exact same thing. Uh, somebody had a picture of a belt and they were like, man, how, what stamp is this? It's not, it's hand cut. So, we'll learn how to do it, okay? Now there's a couple of different tools and ways to do this, and the good news is none of them are really special tools. Um, if you've got just a few basic um, uh, stamps and a swivel knife, you can make it, okay? So with this one right here, I used a, um, an old craft tool lined beveler, uh, beveler B204. Just a little beveler with lots of little lines in it. But with, for this one right here, I actually just used like a matting beveler, a very low angle beveler uh, to get some serious depth or the appearance of some serious depth on there. And then I used my um, swivel knife and cut me some accent lines. Now this little spot right here in the middle is why um, this is my favorite style of geometric um, it's not stamping because you're not using a stamp, you're actually tooling it in. But anyway, I, um, I get a lot of people have asked me over the years, how do you, let's say you're gonna put initials on something, how do you basket weave around that? And the answer is, unless you're dang good, you don't. Um, honestly, I've, I've either will basket weave or, or um, geometrically stamp an entire item and then sew a patch on it that might have initials or a name or a logo or something on it, or, um, I'll just put those items down in the corner so I don't have to make the basket weave match up when it goes around it. Well, when you're hand cutting basket weave, that's not a problem. You can just hand cut right around it. Everything matches up on both sides of it and it's beautiful. Um, it is a labor of love. I'm sure people that are good at basket stamping could have basket stamped this, this piece a lot faster than I hand tooled it. But I like the look. I like it a lot. And then you can always go back and um, dye the diamonds, okay? Um, make it look like all the, the, the strips go in this way or one color and all the strips go in this way or another color. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> um, we're going to, again, do a quick tutorial on how to do this. I'm real sorry I got black stuff all over my hand. I, uh, <laughs> I was playing with a can of Flex Seal earlier and forgot to wear gloves. Anyway, let's hope that project turns out cool too. So, without further ado, down to the workbench and we will get started on this. All right, so first thing I need to do, I'm gonna take my shape here. This is actually the yoke from a new purse we're making, or a new bag. Uh, it was in last month's mystery box. Um, and so we're actually, this is the, I guess, first part of the video for uh, building that bag. Um, I have two of these yokes, I'm gonna have to make them match. So I'll do one on camera and of course I'm not gonna make you watch me do two of them, okay? So, for all geometric stamping, basket weave, whatever you're gonna do, it's always best to start out with a border, okay? So I've got my wing dividers here. Um, now this border, the width of it depends on if it's gonna be sewn or not, um, stuff like that. Uh, this, this border will definitely be sewn and I need it kinda wide. So, this is probably a quarter inch wide, maybe just three sixteenths, but I'm taking my wing dividers and I'm drawing it out. And uh, yeah. I figured this would be a nice thing to do this basket stamp on um, because it's not symmetrically shaped, you know, it's not a straight belt, it's not a, um, a, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? rectangular, you know, notebook or something like that. So maybe this will make a nice little piece to do this on. I, I do love the look of the hand cut basket stamping. I'm sure I've already said that, but uh, anyway. All right, so I'm gonna border also the, uh, the handle here. 
Okay, and again, that's the piece that we're going to have to work around and make all of our baskets, basket tooling um, match. You know, as it goes all the way across, it should look like it's one set of basket uh, work and not have to, uh, you know, and be able to meet up on the other side. Sorry, I'm at a loss for words here. All right. So the way I do this is I use this ruler right here. This is the ruler that we make here at Maker's Leather Supply. And the reason I love this ruler for this is because it has this grid on half of it. Okay, this ruler is exactly two inches wide. Um, one inch of it is gridded out at uh, eighth inch grids and then the other inch, the other uh, part of it is not. Um, it, this ruler is magical because it's got a zero in the middle so it helps you to find the center of things quickly. Um, we're not worried about that part this in this video, but just telling you why it is what it is. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this, this ruler down here at whatever angle I think I want my lines to be. Okay, so I think about like that would look pretty good. Okay, and actually I'm sorry, I have already screwed up. First thing I need to do is cut that border so I don't accidentally uh, cut across it. When I'm when I'm doing my lines, okay. So, I'm using a swivel knife here, and I'm gonna cut my border out. fancy about it I'm just cutting along when I do these straight lines though I do use my pinky up against the uh, leather and that helps me keep it straight ish as I say that I'm wavering back and forth like a drunk driver <laughs> okay now I need to cut the border for the uh, the handle part here Again, this is uh, for uh, what we're going to call the fringy cowhide bag, for lack of a better thing to call it out of. Um, the body of the bag will be made out of cowhide. It will have fringe on it. And then this is, of course, the tooled yoke front and back. Um, since I only made those samples up today, I didn't have time to, uh, to do it. But if I had, had, had uh, antiqued those, man, they'd look really, really nice. Um, there would be a very bold bold look to them. Alright, now back to where we were, right? So I'm going to take, and I've got the grid up against the leather. Okay, and the reason I do that is because I think then my lines will be more accurate. Alright. And all I'm going to do is just cut along the side of that ruler. Okay, if you've watched my um, uh, quilted technique uh, carving video, you'll, you'll, same thing, okay? Now, I have to decide how wide I want my squares to be. And I'm going to make it real simple. This uh, ruler is eight squares wide because it's one inch in eighth inch grid. So I'm going to go four squares. I know you can't see it, I'm sorry, but the, the four squares are uh, uh, on the bottom side of it. Okay, and I'm going to move the line that I carved four squares and put it right up under the ruler and my the ruler's line will cover up that line that I already cut and then I'm going to cut another one and you're going to go along doing this exact thing all the way once you get two of them in it's a lot easier especially if you're just doing them half inch apart from each other because now one line is where it needs to be under the fourth square and the other one is under the last uh, line in the ruler. Okay. Now, if you don't have this fancy, fancy, schmancy ruler, I advise you get one, just kidding. Um, you can always use wing dividers or something like that to set up your lines. It can take a little bit longer, uh, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? But if you do have a ruler like this or even a, a thin piece of plastic or something you could just lay up there that's the width you want your squares to be um, it sure will speed up your process okay now I'm going to go ahead and cut these squares or these lines all the way out to this corner up here 
And then I'm going to spin it around and go back because if you notice, I started kind of in the middle. So a couple more cuts and then I'll do that. And then this video is going to get real fast as I uh, continue cutting the lines. And then um, we'll come back and we'll cut the opposite direction. Okay. So I've got them all the way out to there. Now I'm going to spin it around and just go back the other way. Just like that. Okay, so there it is. Now I have to cut the opposite sides to make the squares, I guess you could say. Uh, and the neat thing about this is, um, the, the being able to hand cut them, you can make these squares as big or as small as you want. I keep calling them squares. Uh, I honestly like to make them more diamond shaped, um, but you can do them at perfect square angles if you like, but uh, to each their own. Um, but anyway, you can make them as big or small as you want to kind of match your project. You know, if you're doing a big area, you might want to do bigger ones. If you're doing a small area, you might want to do smaller ones. You get the point. Okay? So, I'm going to go about here and cut the others. So, there we go. Now we have our opposing uh, direction there. Okay, and again, I'll bring it down to the fourth line on my ruler and I'll just keep going like that and again this video is about to speed up be some nice diamonds um, the angles on them aren't so acute and obtuse that they'll be difficult to bevel into the corners um, this is gonna be a good one if it wasn't you'd never see it and we'd start a new video wouldn't we <laughs> them pretty diamonds. Okay, now comes the confusing part. <laughs> I'm gonna redampen my leather a little bit here with my spray bottle. First thing I'm gonna do is bevel my border. Um, I'm gonna use this push beveler because it's faster than hand beveling it, okay? And also I don't need this bevel to match all the beveling I'm gonna do in the basket stamps, or the basket design. I gotta quit saying stamp. Now there is an old craft tool, and I'm sure Barry King and Clay Miller and Wayne Jusky, I'm sure all of them make a tool that does this. But to be very honest, I'm not that great at geometric stamping. I've never really sat down and practiced it a lot, so it's just not something I am amazing at. Um, more often than not, I will do that whole get a stamp out of whack and screw it all up. But this is an old, old uh, craft tool USA and it does a very similar pattern to what we're about to do. It's, it's, even though it's a very old Craft Tool USA stamp, um, it's seen better days and it's not near as crisp um, of a design as what I will hand cut, but it does do the same pattern. As a matter of fact, I've got a sampling of it right here. But just like any basket weave, I could easily get off track with that thing and um, screw up the whole project. Now, 
I'm a firm believer that people's different people's minds work in different ways and they comprehend and understand things in different ways. Um, I know that what seems easy or simple to me confuses some others and then vice versa. Things that are really easy for other people, I just don't grasp. Um, but I'm going to explain kind of how I do this and how I keep track of which side of what line to bevel, um, you know, as we do our basket stamps or basket pattern. And uh, you'll have to kind of figure out a system that works for you. Now, as with any beveling, you know, you always put the tool on the side that you want to press down and make it look like it's going other under the other side. Okay, so you got to keep that in mind. And again, I'm just using it's a very low angled checkered beveler. Mm, I have uh, the nice fancy line stamps, but I I think this one just because it's a it's a it's a really nice well made tool. I think that it gives me a better impression. Now. I'm just going to start with one square. Let's say this one right here. And I'm going to take two sides of it and bevel the outside of the square. Okay, so there we go. I've beveled the outside of that. Now turn it around and bevel the other side to the outside in the exact same fashion. There we go. Now, the other two sides of that same square, I'm going to bevel to the inside. Thus beginning my 3D appearance and pattern. Now, I can go up that exact same line. Let's say I'm going to go up and down that row right there. Now. Since I beveled on the inside right here, then on the next square down on that line, I'm going to bevel on the outside. Basically, every other square, I'm going to bevel on opposite sides of the line. Okay, so... Now, I don't really know how many squares would have been in this area so I'm not going to go all the way to above the handle just yet as I work my way around then I can come back and figure that part out okay so now I can do the line underneath it though and if I bevel to the inside on this side of the square then I need to bevel to the inside of, of the the lower part of that exact same square I sure hope that makes a little bit of sense okay so what I'm talking about is that square right there and since I had beveled the inside right here, I want to bevel the inside right there because that one is going under the next next two there. Sorry, the next two, okay? So I'm gonna do this line now. I did that one on the uh, wooden side of the line, so I'll do the next one on the other side of the line. Skip one and do it again. Okay, this keeps me from having to spin it around after every bevel and do the next one. I'll just do every other part of that same line, then I'll go back. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so that's where we're at. Okay, now I have to do all those lines. So the video, once again, is about to speed up. And the more of them you do, the more it, it really just appears to you. And you're like, oh, okay, I see what I'm doing here. And I see which lines to bevel. That being said, it's, it's okay uh, that once in a while you might get a little lost. Zoom in a tiny bit more there. You might get a little lost. You might bevel on the wrong side of one of the lines. Now, if I do that, all I do is spin it around and bevel on the correct side a lot harder okay and then it still it'll still be a little bit of mistake there you, 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 you will be able to see it but most people won't okay so I'm gonna go along the video is gonna speed up and I'm going to do a whole bunch of these lines 
and then we'll come back. Okay, now I have done all the lines from here to here, just the lines going this way. So now I'll turn it and I'm just gonna do the exact same. I'll finish that half off um, before coming over here and doing the opposite side, okay? So now I'm gonna bevel the lines going this way. And they're easier to bevel because I can look at the squares that are half finished and decide that like, let's say this square right here, these two lines are beveled to where that square is down, which means these two lines need to go underneath it. And so they'll be beveled down to complete the square. And again, I am sorry if this is confusing to you, it's very hard for me to describe, but I'm doing it. <laughs> okay. So, I'm going to go along just like I did before and I'm going to treat it the same way I did the other line. I'm going to do uh, every other one on this side then every other one on, on the other side and uh, they'll all start to pop out and you'll see it and be like, oh, okay, I'm basket weave, what do you know? All right, I do need a little bit more moisture content here. Okay. So, here I go. Okay, so now I've done all four sides of all of those on that side. But now I can start working my way back across here because I can see now where it should be beveled. So that's what I'm gonna do. So there we go. Oop, let me grab a couple of these top ones I missed over here. What really stinks about small areas like this though is too that there's gonna be a border stamp both around the handle area and around the outside border. And that's gonna cover a lot of this up. But we'll talk about that in a minute. All right, so now I just have to go back the other way. Do the exact same thing, follow the exact same pattern and make it to the other side of the project, okay? I'm going to stop the video and then I'll resume it when I've gotten that far. Because again, you shouldn't have to watch that even if it is fast forwarded. All right, folks, so there it is right there, okay? We did all of our beveling on our basket stamp. Sorry, basket weave pattern. Quit saying stamp. Um, now, very important, a border, okay? Even, I see a lot of beginners on uh, social media and stuff, and they're beginning to experiment with geometric and basket stamping and stuff like that. And um, they're doing good stuff. Like their basket weave is nice, it's straight, it, it looks good, but, if you don't put a defining border around your, your geometric stamping, no matter what kind of geometric it is, it's just, it's lacking. I mean, a basket stamp can't just 
stop in nowhere because then it doesn't look like uh, a basket weave anymore. Now it just looks like, okay, you stopped stamping. So I encourage you, if you're doing any kind of geometric stamping and stuff, if you're new at this, try putting a border around stuff, just like we did here. Okay, I put a border around the outside and a border around the, the handle part. Um, basically anywhere that your stamping is going to stop, or your hand cut basket weave, um, do a border. Now, you don't have to do a border tool. I like to, I think it really adds to it. Okay, see, border tool all the way around the borders there. Um, you don't have to do that, but once again, it, it does have a more professional and finished appearance. Okay, now, I say that to say this. You don't have to have fancy, fancy tools. Okay, right here, this is what I'm about to use as my border. It's just a camouflage tool. Same one that you can find in your basic seven toolkit. Okay, it's just a camouflage tool. And I'm gonna go all the way around the borders with it. And it's gonna look fabulous. Okay, so I just put it up there, hit it, move it, do it again, over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. So there should be. It looks a lot cleaner with that border stamp going around it, doesn't it? It's okay. You can say yes. I'll pretend like I heard you. So, now, the tedious part, okay? This is the part that I kind of wish, well, I do have Netflix in here. I just don't ever turn on my TV. But anyway, this is the part that uh, is going to take probably the longest. And all it is is I'm going to cut some little decorative cuts in there to make it look like the basket weave is, you know, like the basket is strained and going under each layer. Okay. Um, there's no rhyme or reason to it. I am a less is more kind of guy. I'm not going to cut a thousand little hairline. Um, I did on the other one, I did experiment with my, my hair blade tool and I didn't really like it. A hair blade tool, if you've never seen one, it's, it's just a bunch of little sharp lines on there. Um, I've got a fine side and a, and a coarse side. Ooh, there we are. Um, anyway, I, I didn't like the look of the hair blade tool, just like I didn't like the look of the, 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 the um, lined beveler. So what I'm going to do is, where this is coming out from under an, uh, um, a layer, I'm just going to do some random cuts. Different lengths, different depths. Okay. Now, you'll do a couple of these and you'll be like, oh my gosh, I'm ruining my project. I should stop. Don't. Don't stop. Okay? What's that uh, saying? If you're going through hell, keep going. <laughs> you don't want to stop. Okay? It will look great once you get a bunch of them done. But I know that at the beginning, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, what have I done? I've, I've ruined the last hour of my life. Okay? So, keep going, guys. All right, so I'm going to turn off the video um, while I sit here and do this. And what I'm going to do is I'll do all the ones facing me now, then I'll spin it around and do all the ones facing me then, okay? Um, I don't do, like, one square at a time because then I keep having to turn this all the time and it's not conducive to quick work. Um, but, yeah, so I'll do all these and then I'll spin it around do all the others and then I'll spin it 90 degrees and do all those others and spin it one more time and do all those others. And when I come back... That'll be done. All right, folks, so there it is. All those little cuts. Done. Okay, now, I'm not going to go a step further on this one. But on my practice piece here, I'll show you. I have this here hand lifter. Okay, this is used to get up under the edges of pedals and things like that. And really get some some leverage on your uh, your pedals and make them the scallops fold up and stuff like that so if i wanted to do three more hours worth of work i would take and put it underneath the edge let me see if i'm on camera here 
put it underneath the edge right here and kind of slide it along very carefully because this tool is actually kind of sharp. And it would give it the appearance of more depth because it kind of undercuts that area. Okay, and I did a couple of other lines um, before we came back on the video just to, to, to show you. Um, on let's say this were a wall hanging or something that would nothing would ever compress that and everything this would be a pretty cool thing to do um but one i'm not doing it on this because i have a whole nother side of this purse to do still and i don't want to add that much more work to it and then two i don't think it'll make an, enough of a difference on these small squares that it'll really be noticeable so i'm um, just showing you another option but there it is All right, folks, so I hope you uh, learned a little something. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you um, get to play with it and practice it some and see what you think. Uh, until next time, I'm Aaron Heiser of Makers Leather Supply. Have a great day.